Well, <clears throat> hello, hello, all of my crafty friends. It's Kiona, the craft therapist here, and I do apologize that I'm sounding like a frog, but I'm having some sinus issues going on, but I'm so excited to introduce to you guys our first Mental Health Monday. Now, remember, I will be talking about mental health while I'm doing a crafting video, so if you have any questions about the actual card in this video, please leave it in the comment section below, and I'll be more than happy to explain anything that you saw that you did not understand. So let's get started with our first episode of Mental Health Monday. I'm super excited to introduce to you to this um, topic. And so one of the first things that I've decided that I wanted to talk about is um, a therapy type. And I am going to start out with us discussing cognitive behavioral therapy. And cognitive behavioral therapy um, and specifically, I want to talk a little bit about recording your thoughts. So first, let's go into cognitive behavioral therapy, which is CBT. Um, so what is CBT? CBT is kind of looked at as what we call a third wave type of approach. Um, and the reason that this is looked at as a third wave approach is because um, it combines kind of two specific types of therapies that we would typically use. So you have behavioral therapy and you have cognitive therapy that were both um, therapy types prior to cognitive behavioral therapy coming into play. So that's why you have this merging or what we call a third wave approach. Now, behavioral therapy is something that you guys probably all have heard something about um, Ivan Pavlov and the dogs and this idea of being able to um, recreate an, an instance, what we call conditioning in therapy. You ring the bell, the dogs begin to salivate. Um, and then B.F. Skinner. So those are kind of two of the pioneers from behavioral therapy. Um, and behavioral therapy is a therapy that focuses on your behaviors, your external, whereas cognitive therapy more focuses on the internal, your thought process. So it's thought that when we think about cognitive behavioral therapy, it's um, one of the many uh, aspects of how your therapist would create treatment for you, a modality. And modality pretty much is, you know, therapists practice psychological therapy theories um, and are trained to focus on one particular aspect of a person's experience um, and to react in a particular way. So we call this like every therapy has a different stance. So when you think about dialect dialectical behavioral therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, reality therapy, um, acceptance and commitment therapy, all of those are just pretty much the stance that your therapist takes in order to try to help you um, deal with a particular issue. So CBT stance is the here and now, rational and collaborative. So those are three main components of thinking of cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. So let's break down their stance. So first, let's talk about the here and now. Um, CBT theory says that the here and now is where the person's pain and suffering lies. So if you're anxious, you're feeling that fear now. And if you're depressed, our feelings of sadness or loss is happening now. CBT recognizes that um, we might be doing things in the here and now that inadvertently prevent our problem from lifting. Um, and if that is the case, then the obvious solution is to discover and address these as soon as possible. Um, one of the things that I notice is that sometimes CBT is criticized for their here and now stance by people who might argue that it completely ignores or doesn't pay any attention to a person's past. However, um, to me, that's a misunderstanding. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy pays close attention to a person's history because understanding their history or the origin of their problem and beliefs is essential to 
making sense of what is going on in the here and now. Um, now, with that being said, uh, the problems that are causing pain and suffering are in the present. So they're in the here and now, but there is an understanding that the person's history does play a vital role in it. Um, and when you think about if your problems are in the here and now, if that what's causing your pain and suffering is in the present, then that's where we have the power to make the change. So the focus of cognitive behavioral therapy is typically to return to the present moment. So that's a little bit about the here and now. Let, now let's talk about the idea of being rational. Um, another part of cognitive behavioral therapy stance is that it is rational. It takes the position that, you know, a human's experiences experiences are understandable and that um, their feelings are a process or a result of the process that we can make sense of. Um, when working with a therapist, the, the client and the therapist come to a shared understanding of whatever the problem is. Um, they, and, and they build on that understanding. That's the whole foundation. And then together they come up with ways that they want to address the problem. So cognitive behavioral therapy promotes a rational approach of thinking. So we're always trying to look at bringing ourselves back to our, uh, front part of our brain, our prefrontal cortex, so that we can access the rational part of our thinking. So the goal isn't to just think happy thoughts, but more so in cognitive behavioral therapy, it is to think in a balanced, accurate, and rational way. So sometimes that's a huge part of cognitive behavioral therapy and kind of where the cognitive portion of that comes from. Let's talk about the thinking and how do we get that thinking, not all negative driven, all fear based, but looking at it in a balanced, accurate and rational way. So that's the second part of the cognitive behavioral stance. Now, the third thing that I spoke about was collaborative. When I say collaborative, um, the therapist in a true CBT format makes a point of conducting therapy that is collaborative. We are a partnership. Um, CBT therapists aim for their therapy to feel more like it's a journey of exploration where the therapist is beside the client instead of the therapist being put in this position of being the expert. Like we're doing this together. I'm your support, but I'm not higher than you. I don't know more than you um, because at the end of the day, you are the expert on your life. So one goal of CBT therapy is for the client to become their own therapist. Um, again, you're the expert on your life. We just want to help equip you with the toolkits to assist you. So that's where that supportive component comes in and makes CBT very um, collaborative. So you have the fact that it's focused in the here and now, and that kind of does the behavioral part of CBT. You have that rational part of CBT that focuses a lot on cognitions and thoughts. And then you have the collaboration portion of CBT that we are in this together. We are not in a place where I am more than you. Um, so the key message of cognitive behavioral therapy is the way we think or our cognitions and what we do, which are our behaviors, affect the way we feel. So if you think about like a loop, like this circle, your thoughts affect your feelings, which affect your actions. That's kind of what CBT is. And 
it follows this idea that if we want to change the way we feel, then we have to make changes to the way that we think or the way we act. So you have to decide where you want to cut that loop. Do you want to focus on your actions or do you want to focus on your thoughts to be the breaking point to end your cycle? Um, everybody has like thousands and thousands of thoughts every day. Some of our thoughts are like uplifting, such as like, I'm glad I did that, or I really like being here. Um, and some of the thoughts that we have in a day are more downbeat, you know, I'll never be able to do this, or I'm a waste of space. But more importantly, some thoughts are accurate. I really messed up that time is a good example. Um, but then there are some that are just plain untrue. I'm completely useless. So if you think about all of those different types of thoughts that we have in a day, I think one of the biggest problems that we run into is that we forget that thoughts are not facts. Not all of the thinking that is happening in our head is slow. Um, a lot of it is not careful, deliberate, or accurate. Um, so there there was a really, I think it was like a best-selling book, um, Thinking Fast and Slow. Um, and it describes the experiments that show the shortcuts our brain often prefers to take. So when we're faced with a problem, we can choose to respond carefully by thinking of possible solutions and then examining the advantages and the disadvantages of each. Or we might just have a quick and automatic hunch that, and that's how we solve it. Um, and it turns out that our brain is surprisingly lazy um, and biased to top that off. Um, these biases often creep up into our thinking and the key things that we know we need to remember are that we all have quick and automatic thoughts that just pop up in our minds. Um, those automatic thoughts are often based on assumptions, not facts, and automatic thoughts are often very believable, but they can be inaccurate. So, one of the biggest things that I want you to take home from this is that our thoughts are not facts. Much of the times they're assumptions and they're not even accurate because our brains have created these shortcuts to just jump to a conclusion versus thinking things through slowly. So if you ever get a chance to pick up that book, um, Thinking Fast and Slow, I, I think his name is like Daniel Kahneman or something to that effect. I'm sure you could find it on Amazon. Um, we all have our favored biases. Um, perhaps you have met that person in air quotes, um, who thinks they are amazing and never acknowledge any of their mistakes or their thoughts or their flaws. Sorry, words are hard this morning. Or perhaps you've um, met the converse. Um, the friend who is always critical of themselves, uh, no matter what their actual achievement is. That person that can never accept a compliment. That person that never gives themselves kudos. Different kinds of biases are associated with different problems. So this is where our um, unhealthy thought patterns come from. So based upon the thought biases you have, you typically are going to have a negative thought um, area that you subscribe to the most. My favorite is catastrophizing. I will run down a rabbit hole in such a minute. Um, and I have to pull myself out now because it's so quick that it happens. And when you're catastrophizing, you're seeing the worst situation. Um, and this leads to a lot of anxiety. So I'll give you an example. Um, one day my truck started skipping when I was driving it and it freaked me out. And I immediately stopped where I was going and went back to my office and 
kind of was just super anxious and um, very unsettled. And so two of my uh, co-workers, one was my director and the other one was a supervisor, wanted to know what was going on. And because my car had skipped, I had decided in my catastrophizing that I was not going to be able to do my work because I was doing community mental health. And so I was going to get fired from my job. And since I got fired from my job, I wasn't going to be able to contribute to paying bills. So my husband was going to leave me and he was going to take my kids and I was going to be homeless pretty much living in a box on the street. Like in my mind, that little cardboard box with the raining down and someone hovering inside was what came to mind. And that was my catastrophe. Um, and so simply my coworkers asked, like, have you taken it to be checked out yet? And I had not even like, that was that fast thinking. The slow part did not come in because it was my bias that kicked in quickly and took me all the way to being, you know, unemployed, broke, homeless and destitute with no one who cared about me. When I thought about it slowly, it's like, okay, well, let's take the vehicle to the shop to be checked out first. And oddly enough, there wasn't anything wrong with my car. I had just put bad gas in it. Um, another really unhelpful thinking style is that idea of excluding the positive. So you discount anything that's positive, you write it off, you make excuses for it, and that can lead to a lot of feelings of depression. Um, that negative bias is always telling you that you're not good enough. You didn't really do that. Um, and I think something that's closely associated with that would be that imposter syndrome. So if you've not heard about imposter syndrome, let me know in the comment section below and I will talk to you a little bit more about that. So the other negative thinking style that I just wanted to touch on briefly is that personalization. Um, that is the tendency to blame ourselves for everything and anything that goes wrong. It's that self-criticism that we use and that can lead us to feeling sad and anxious. So sometimes you have that anxiety, sometimes you have the depression, and sometimes you have one that leads into the other and you get the best or worst of both worlds, you know? So, so far, what we talked about is the core message of cognitive behavioral therapy, and that is what you think affects how you feel. And there are a lot of evidence that um, our thinking can be very biased, and we've learned that different biases can lead to different emotional problems. So now that I talked to you guys a little bit about cognitive behavioral therapy, I want to talk to you about an idea or a concept that's used a lot in cognitive behavioral therapy, which is cognitive restructuring. Um, so this is a process of changing how we think. So it's not just thinking happy thoughts again. It is actually taking the time to think about and restructure the way that you're thinking. Because sadly, just thinking happy thoughts doesn't work. Um, we want to do more accurate thinking. It's not even about getting rid of bad emotions. Like, for example, if someone hurts you and then you feel angry, you have every right to feel angry. But it's about seeing that things, it's about seeing the things the way that they are and interpreting the events accurately. Um, so if you are interpreting your events accurately, then you're able to overcome your bias and it gives you the best chance at reacting appropriately. So you can see that thought, feeling, action just in that example. So one of the things that we start out doing when we talk about cognitive restructuring is learning how to record your thoughts and your feelings. So the first step is, you know, changing what we think is to know what we're thinking in the first place. So a lot of times you'll ask a person what they're thinking and they'll say nothing. Um, and it's not that they're blank in their brain, but more so these thoughts are going so fast that they are not able to catch their automatic thoughts. 
So the first thing in recording your thoughts is to catch your automatic thoughts and you need to start paying attention to what's going on in your mind, particularly at times when you notice a change in how you're feeling. So that's kind of one of those trigger points. If you notice that your feelings are changing, it's a great time to tune in to figure out what are you thinking. So when you notice an unpleasant feeling, you can ask yourself, what's going through my mind just then? Um, And when you start to ask yourselves this question, um, you notice that there's a lot of verbal thoughts. These thoughts can be uh, like little sentences or words in your mind. I'm going to mess that up. Or some people notice that their thoughts are formed in images. They might have a mental image of a face or like um, being embarrassed, their face going red when they're in a public place. Whatever it is that goes through your mind is important to write down as soon as possible. As soon as you notice it, writing it down quickly means that you're less likely to forget or dismiss the thought. And many people find it very powerful just to see their thoughts written down. So in therapy, we often use a tool called a thought record or thought monitoring record to help the clients catch their thoughts. So I want to talk to you about um, a worksheet and the worksheet, if you can imagine, has three columns to help you collect your information. So the first thing that it asks is the situation the thought happened in. So you explain your situation. Then you explain your thought or the image that you're having. And then you talk about how you felt about it after that. Um, so the best time to complete it is right after you notice a change in how you're feeling or a sudden shift in your emotions. It's a sign that you're thought about something you have interpreted a, like that you've interpreted a bit, an event in a certain way. Um, so some things, um, some suggestions for helpful information to record in the situation column is, you know, the date and time, where you were, who was with you, and then summarize what happened just before you noticed the change in your feelings. Then when you're talking about the feelings, you're thinking about the sensations. What was the shift in emotions um, that prompted it? Um, What sensation did your body become aware of? What rapid changes in your body did you find? Um, Remember that emotions can generally be described in one word, anger, sad, excitement. Then you rate the strength of it, zero to 100%. And then you record what you felt in your body. And then when you talk about the thoughts, you want to look at what am I saying to myself? Did I have an image or a picture or memory in my mind? Um, What did it mean? What does it say about you? What are the implications did the situation have for you and your future? Like, what did it mean about your future? So once you've recorded um, your thoughts, you rate your beliefs on a scale of zero to 100 Zero means you don't believe it at all, and 100 believe, means that you completely believe it. Um, so that's kind of recording your, your thoughts. So the next time that we see each other, we're going to start looking at how to challenge negative thoughts. So if you're interested in kind of following along with us and you would like a sample thought monitoring record, um, you can go and I will put one up on my blog. Um, and also in the craft therapy room. Um, And I would love to know if you found this helpful. If there are any other things that you would like for me to talk about or a specific topic or question that you would like for me to try to explain or explore um, during our Mental Health Mondays, please, please, please leave me a message. I want this to be um, as helpful for you as possible. I don't have a huge... um, plan for this. I want this to be collaborative. Um, so I want to be able to do what it is that is important and that will be helpful for you guys. Um, if you like techniques, if you want to know about a certain disorder, a certain therapy type, 
um, if there's a certain situation that you just kind of want me to talk about and give some feedback on, please leave me a comment. I always have all of my contact information, including my email and all my social media handles in the description box. Please feel free to send me a private message or an email with anything that you may not want to be placed like out um, on the internet and I will be more than happy to address anything that I can with you guys. I am really so excited for this Mental Health Monday um, and I am hoping that it will be super beneficial. I hope that the video that I've created for you guys today was explanatory without having me um, actually give a description and I would love to know what you thought about that as well. Um, you guys know that I love talking to you guys in the comments section. So if there's anything, anything, anything that you would like to talk to me about, any questions that you have, or just leave me a little bit of feedback. I love hearing that too. Um, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to our channel. Make sure you let me know if you're new because I want to know who's in our community. I hope you guys have enjoyed this today. I hope that you guys have a Monday and a week that starts off blessed and prosperous and full of joy and peace. Um, and I am going to be looking forward to talking to you guys really, really soon um, in our next video. So have a great day. Bye-bye.